Hey, what's up you guys? It's Annie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to customize your Apple devices with the brand new iOS 14 that just came out about two days ago on our phones and devices. So this is including the custom widgets, the custom app icons, the brand new back tap feature that I'm obsessed with, hidden pages, and how to use the app library. And I know some of you guys have probably watched a dozen of these videos, so these features may not be anything new, but I think it's a lot like the regular what's on my iPhone videos and even though some people may have the same apps it's still really cool to see how each individual person has customized their iPhone and I still got loads and loads and loads of requests from you guys to see how I've customized my own phone with iOS 14 so I hope you guys still find a way to enjoy this video and maybe you learn even one new thing somebody else has not said before so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the screen recording of my phone all right so this is my home screen so once you see this basically what you see is what you get I know a lot of people with iOS 14 have like two pages, five pages, even seven pages of apps and customizations. I'm very minimal and simple. I like to have everything on one screen. So what you see here is definitely what you get with my phone. So at the top, I have a calendar widget. Then on the bottom, I have a little widget that tells you basically what time the sunrise and sunset are because I'm obsessed with all things sunrises and sunsets. And then beside that, it tells you how many steps you've taken throughout the day because it is only seven a.m. I've only taken 80 steps so far today, but that is what that widget does. And then in the middle, I have two rows of my most used apps, things like Gmail, Instagram, YouTube Studio, that type of thing. Basically the apps I find myself reaching for multiple times throughout the day. And as you can see, they've all been customized with different app icons and pictures, which I will get into in just a minute. All right, so first things first for the widget. So I'm sure you've definitely heard of this app called Widget Smith. Basically everybody who has made these videos has had this app on their phone and used it, but I had a lot of confusion myself when I was first using it, so hopefully I can help even one person to break that confusion. So once you are inside of the Widget Smith app, you basically have small widgets, medium widgets, and large widgets. So the small widgets are these ones here that are like little squares at the bottom. This top one is a medium widget, and then the bigger widget, the large widget, are the ones that take up like a good part of your screen. So those are the three different types of widgets. So how do you go about actually adding widgets to your phone? So let's say I want to add another one of these small widgets, you go ahead and tap on add a small widget, which makes another one pop up. So then you go ahead and click on the new widget and then you click in the middle. And that basically gives you a long list of all the different features and widgets you can have on your screen. So you can have like a clock, you can have a calendar, you can have a reminders widget. If you wanna pay for it, you can have a weather widget. I just have the free version and loads of other ones as well. So let's say for the sake of this video, I want to add another widget that says like the week number. So once you click on the icon you want, it has a customization that pops up. So first things first, the font. So the font is what controls which font you have on the widget. So let's say I want this New York one since it's super like cute and aesthetic. Then you click on the tint colors. The tint color is the actual coloring of the writing. So gray, green, pink, white, red, whatever you like. I'm just gonna pick gray for this and then the background color. So background color can be white, gray, black, blush pink, yellow, so many things. And then they also have these border colors. So I really like the border color ones because my wallpaper is a super bright sort of like peach beige color. So the border color kind of helps it to pop. So for the tint color, I think I'm gonna take gray. And then for the background color, I think I'm gonna go with the white one down here. So once you have picked your icon and done all of your customizations, then go back to where it says small number five or whatever your number is and then hit save. So then to go about actually adding it to your phone, what you do is hold down one of your apps and basically push your phone in edit home screen mode. Then you press the plus at the top and then scroll all the way down to where you have widget smith. Then you pick whether you're adding a small, medium, or large widget. So this one was a small one. So I go ahead and click add widget. So then once you've done that, the widget will pop up on your screen. But as you can see, this is not the one I chose. This is the sun that one and I chose the week 38 or whatever. So for that, you click on the widget you've just added and then click on the drop down menu. So this automatically went to small number four, but it is small number five that I've just created. So I click on small number five and that will automatically change it to the one I have just created. And that is how you added those super cute, super aesthetic custom widgets to your iPhone. And that is how I got all of these widgets. So now I got a lot, a lot, a lot of questions on how I got these little custom app icons 
icons here. So for this, you want to go ahead and open up the shortcuts app. Once you're in here, click on the plus at the top, go to add action and then scripting. Then in scripting, you want to choose the open app feature. And then where it says choose, you want to click that and pick the app you want to customize. So let's say that for this example, I want to change the icon of the camera app. Go ahead and click on camera. Here you want to type in the name of your shortcut. So for the sake of this, I'm going to keep the same name and just make it the camera, then hit done. So once you're in done, you want to click the three little dots at the top here and then go to the arrow at the bottom and go down to add to home screen. Once you've hit add to home screen, it will basically highlight a blue box around the icon. You want to click on that and then go to choose a photo. So for this, you can do literally whatever you want. You can pick more like aesthetic icons from Google. I just basically used some Pinterest pictures. So let's say for the sake of this, I want to use this picture here. I resize it to fit the square and hit choose. Once you do that, you click the add at the top and then go back to your home screen and you have a brand new app widget right there. So then finally, because that has now replaced the camera app. I then hold down the camera icon of the normal app and go to edit home screen and then click the minus. You want to then basically hit the remove from home screen so that this one is the only app you are left with. So then once you hit the app icon, it basically goes back to the shortcuts app and then goes to the app you were looking to open. So some people may or may not like having to be redirected through the shortcuts app, but honestly, I don't mind it that much, but that is what happens when you create a shortcut and then where the original app icon went is into your app library. So this feature, the app library, a lot of people are super lukewarm on, some love it, some hate it. I'm sort of on the side of loving it currently because I like not having to have a page full of folders because all of my apps are over here. The only thing I don't love about this is that you can't actually customize it. So you can't control what goes in what folders or what the folders are called, but I do like not having to have a page full of app folders. But speaking of app folders, one other feature I've been loving with iOS 14 are hidden pages. So for hidden pages, I'm basically going to hold down one of the app icons and go into edit home screen and then this this little icon at the bottom with the two dots, I'm going to click on that and that automatically opens this edit pages section. So as you can see, the first page, my home screen is checked and the second one that has all the folders is unchecked. That is because that page is currently being hidden. So if ever I do actually want the page on my phone that has the folders on it, I just have to check the page and go to done and that page will automatically show up on my home screen. But because I don't want this page and want it to remain hidden, I will go back into edit home screen mode. I go to the three dots and then uncheck that page and it automatically becomes hidden. Hidden. And that is how you use and create a hidden page with iOS 14. So then the very last feature I want to show you guys is one of my absolute favorites called Backtap. So I'm not 100% sure which devices or phones do or don't have this feature, but I mean, if you check your settings and it's there, you have it. If you don't have it, it's not going to be there. So for this, you go into your settings and go down to accessibility. Then in accessibility, go down to touch and then go all the way down to back tap. So in back tap, you have double tap and triple tap. So basically what this does is when you either double tap or triple tap the back of your phone, it's going to do any one of these features. So it can open a specific app. It can basically magnify your phone. It can put your volume up or down. It can take a screenshot. It can do so many things. So for the double tap, I've set it to do a screenshot. So when I double tap on the back of my phone, it takes a screenshot of my screen and then for the triple tap, it will lock my screen. I'm not going to show you guys that because if I do the lock screen, it's going to end my screen recording, but you get the idea. So through the new back tap feature, you can basically have it do any one of these different features to basically do something faster for you, depending on what you choose for it to do. But that is one more feature of iOS 14 I am obsessed with. So that you guys is basically everything I had for this, how to customize your iPhone in iOS 14 video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though there have been like a million of these made at this point. Hopefully Hopefully you guys learned at least one new thing or saw something you liked in this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love you all to the moon and back and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!